take a two. I forgot I got out of focus, all right. Wolf. Well, I've been a bit busy, haven't I? Many things have been going on, um, from making many documentaries to shooting episodes to uh, going on recall masterclass, which is what this one's about, and also going to the APDT activity weekend. But that one I wasn't learning, I was kind of like filming, going, oh, that's a moving dog, make sure you get the focus right one. So I couldn't really focus on them telling me about what the workshops are about. Never mind, I'm sure I'll go next year. That's all to come. Today, today is all about a recall masterclass that I went to a little while ago, run by John Rogerson. He's an interesting chap and he's force free, so good. So yeah, good interview with him. But first, have a little look, see what the, the whole recall masterclass was all about. I'm here with the enigmatic John Rogerson um, and I've been on a, this is the fourth day of a recall masterclass and it's been rather interesting. Hi John and thank you very much for your time. Oh, no problem, glad to be here. I thought I'd just ask you about, because you're, you're a dog, dog trainer that travels the world, I thought I'd ask you about what are the different cultures like around the world that you see and how they interact with their dogs and some of the common things that you see, so maybe breeds that you see in some places and not in other places, and how, uh, yeah, and also because you've been doing this a long time, maybe how it's changed over the, the years as well. Um, well, first of all, dog training has changed enormously, particularly over the last 10, 15 years, where we've had a move away from the old style training, you know, a lot of ex-military compulsion stuff, and we've moved to uh, a much more rewarding type of training. So we refer to the training that we do as reward-based. You know, you, instead of saying, how can I stop my dog doing this, what we look at is how can I teach the dog to do what I want and reward it for what I want. Um, in terms of culture, the behavior of dogs is actually entirely dependent on the culture in which you live. So, example, if you look at any culture and you see the behavior of children, how they behave towards elderly people, how they respect property, it's mirrored in the behavior of dogs in that culture. So some cultures, great if you want to look at child behavior, dog behavior. Some cultures are particularly bad. And certainly in the UK, um, over the last 10, 15 years, dog behavior has slowly deteriorated. If it, if it hadn't deteriorated, we wouldn't have as many laws that protect people from dogs. So um, some examples, we were in India fairly recently and we approached a group of nomads who had dogs with them and the dogs were there to protect the flocks of sheep and goats especially the young ones so there's four dogs p patrolling a perimeter and i wanted to go and talk to them we wanted to find out you know what sort of food do you feed the dogs their relationship with the dogs and we approached and the person that we were with said you know you can get so far but don't go too close because the dogs will bite you and sure enough you know we start approaching and the dogs came out and barking ferociously, and, and certainly I know dog body language, there'd be no way that I would have gone near any of those dogs. And the woman of the family uh, came out, just spoke in a quiet voice to the dog, touched it on the head, and the dog then just come running, it's just like flipping the switch, come running over, wagging its tail, you could stroke the friendliest dog you'd ever meet. 
we've lost our ability to communicate with dogs like that. In the age of modern technology, you know, I can communicate with some on the other side of the world, just use my thumbs. But we're getting worse and worse, in my opinion, in personal relationships. And we're getting worse at interpersonal communication with one another. And that's reflected in our communication with dogs. So many people own dogs, but they actually aren't able to communicate with them anymore. Yeah, I can certainly tell from this course that um, a lot of what you're talking about is getting the relationship with you and your dog. Um, for somebody who's watching who's you know not been on this course or not maybe seen you before, what are some of the things that you, you think people can do just simply to build that relationship and to get it going? Okay, first thing is when people get a puppy, no one ever buys a puppy with the intention of donating it to a shelter or kicking it out. They buy it with all good intentions. So why do so many end up in shelters or left abandoned? It's because lack of communication between dog and owner. So this is some of the questions we ask. If you're having a problem with a dog, if you want to train the dog to a reasonably high standard. If you imagine every morning in a typical day when your dog first opens its eyes, give me a list of all the things you give it to look forward to. So what does your dog actually look forward to doing with you each day? And a lot of people, when we ask them that question, especially if they've got a problem with the dog, they actually can't think of anything they give the dog to look forward to. Maybe other than, well, he likes being fed. Which is why so many people now have switched to using food in training instead of using emotional relationship. Second to that question, based on your dog's breed, because most breeds have been developed to do something. So based on the dog's breed, what is the highlight of its week? What do you give it to do each week that the dog looks forward to? So with a beagle, it would be tracking. With a golden retriever, probably swimming. Now with a bloodhound, a walk in the forest. So what do you do with the dog that satisfies what the dog was bred to do? And if you're not doing anything and then you complain, I can't let my beagle off the lead because he follows a scent and runs away, well, it's just lack of communication and understanding. Uh, indeed. I'm, I'm conscious of the time. We've got to get back. You apparently are going to uh, chain us up or something and the, the key's going to be on the yeah, dog's the, collar. The, idea, the culmination of the four days of recall training is we're going to take each handler a distance away from the dog and completely out of sight. We're going to padlock them to a fence or to a tree and we're going to put the key to the padlock on the dog's collar and we're going to release the dog. So if the dog doesn't go to them, guess what will happen? We're going to leave you there. <laughs> So I'll, I'm sure I'll check in, or if, if Aaron doesn't come back to me, I won't be checking back in, I'll be, I'll be left there. But otherwise, I'll uh, check back in with you guys soon. And as always, have a good dog day. Thank you, John. You're more than welcome. Woof.